Let me welcome you to CIT 225, GIS Data Analysis. My name is Vince Dinoto. I'm the author of this class, and let me tell you a little bit about the course and how it's composed. First of all, we're assuming that you have some knowledge of GIS, such as you would have attained in CIT 125 or another introduction to GIS class. So we're assuming that you already have this knowledge, and since you already have this knowledge, we're going to run this class a little bit differently than if you were in one of our CIT 125 classes. We're not going to have homework assignments in this class like we did in previous classes because we assume that you already have some skill knowledge of this area and therefore you're going to read the assignment and be able to take those knowledge gains into authentic case studies. This class is going to be divided into three major parts. Each part will have its own videos that go with it. It'll have its own readings that go with it. It'll have its own demonstrations of how you do certain pieces of the technology. So the class has three modules, and we'll talk about those modules in just a little bit more depth in just a moment. All material in this class will be put into a content management system, and the content management system that we will use is Blackboard. And in Blackboard, we'll be able to control your assignments when they are turned in and the tests that you have to take and components like that. And we'll go through a complete look at Blackboard in just a few moments. But right now, just to be aware, we're going to use Blackboard as our content management system. So the first thing that we do is we require you to take a quiz over the syllabus. And that may sound a little bit strange, but we want to make sure you understand the full functions of the course. And so you have this quiz that you have to take over the syllabus. It's a very short quiz. You can take it as many times as you want to, but you must score 100% before you get into the actual course material. If you don't score 100%, you take it again until you score 100% on it. So you can have these multiple attempts. And it counts nowhere in your grade. So in this course, we're going to go over four major concepts. We're going to go over what's known as georeferencing and digitizing. Georeferencing is the ability to take a map, scan that map, and then put that map onto the Earth's grid. Once you have that map aligned to the Earth's grid, then what you want to be able to do is take information off of that paper map, which is a bitmap. It is a raster. It is not a map that is um, a vector map like we normally use in GIS. So we want to take this raster map, take information off of it, and that's known as digitalization. So we're going to digitize information off of that map. So that's one of the concepts, this georeferencing digitalization. Another concept that we'll cover in this course is remote sensing. Remote sensing might be information that comes from a satellite, so therefore the satellite takes an image of the Earth, it is stored by the satellite, again it's a raster, and we're going to take information from that raster, from the satellite, or it could be low-flying aircraft, or it could be a UAS. So we have different ways that we can have information coming to us. Take that information by looking at the spectral signature of that information, be able to identify this area is grass, this area is pavement, this area is dirt, this area has a metal roof building. This area has an asphalt roof building. So being able to do identification from data that comes from the earth. We're going to only look at passive remote sensing in this course. That is, we're going to look at information that comes from the earth, not information that we send down to the earth and then look at the return information. Just going to look at the reflectance. So we need to understand a little bit about physics um, to be able to understand remote sensing. We're going to look at elevation data. So we're going to look at what's called contour mapping. We're going to look at things like line of sight, hill slope, so that we can understand the terrain. So one of the things that we'll be doing is doing a line of sight calculation between um, armies during the Civil War. So we're going to use historical maps as part of what we're going to do. And we're going to look at how this information works. So we'll do the study of elevation. And the final concept is data collection in the field. So we're looking at how can you go out in the field, collect data, and then put that data onto a map. There's lots of different ways we can do data collection. This is just the introduction to it. So we're going to use your smart device, your cell phone, or tablet to collect data out of the field. 
We're going to use the built-in GPS chip inside these devices as part of our data collection. So we'll show you how to do external data collection out in the field. So those are going to be the four concepts. Georeferencing and digitalization, remote sensing, elevation, and data collection. So in each of these modules, we're going to um, have information that's going to be turned into us. Now, there again, there's only three modules. I just listed four things that we're going to do. The first two items are in the first module, and then elevations in the second module, and data collections in the third module. So we're going to have two items that's turned in in the first module, and the other two modules will have only one item turned in. When you start a module, you're going to take a written test. It's going to be a multiple choice test. You're going to have 20 questions or thereabouts on it. And you're going to take that test. And if you score 90% on that test, which means you miss two questions if it's a 20 question test, you can then use that and go directly to the case study and try the case study. If you score 90% then on the case study, you completed that module and can move to the next module. That's the way that each of the modules will work, except for the first module, you actually have two case studies that you have to do on the first module, and then the other modules, you'll have only one case study that you have to do. So 90% on the test, you move directly into the final assessment, which is a case study. Module 1 has two case studies you have to complete. Each of those case studies is produced at a 90% level. There's a rubric already in the case study telling you what exactly I'm looking for. And you'll be able then to say, I know that material. I don't have to go through all those lessons that you have. And I'm ready to go directly into the next module. If you don't score 90%, what you do is then go and learn the information by doing the lessons following along with the methodology that I have used in the lessons. There's lots of videos and stuff like that for you, and there's lots of writing for you to read. Also, the data files that I use in the lessons are available to you, so you can use the same data that I'm using in the lesson and reproduce basically what I have done. When you feel like you have gained this knowledge, at that point, you do this case study, you score at least a 70% of the case study, and you move to the next module. The pretest counts nothing towards your grade. Only thing that counts towards your grade is what you get on the case study. And again, module one has two case studies that you turn in. If you score less than 70% on any case study, I'll tell you what you did wrong, what's needed, what you omitted, and you can turn it into me again, up to three times. Now we don't do an average of those grades. We take the last grade that you get and that's the grade you get for that case study. So you got up to three times to turn in a case study. It's got to be at least a 70% to move forward. Because this is a building class. You need the knowledge from the first case studies to do the second case study and so forth for the third case study. So you have two different pathways that you may follow. If you already know some of this content, you may be able to test out a part of this content and move forward. If you don't have any knowledge of this content, no problem. You'll be able to go through it more traditionally and complete it in a traditional format. So we have these two different pathways. Again, we have four different subject areas, georeferencing and digitalization, introduction to remote sensing. There's a full class we have on remote sensing. Elevation studies, such as contour mapping and hillshade and items like that. And external data collection, field data collection. Those will be the four content areas. Now, not all of you probably have used Blackboard before. So what I'm going to do now is show you how Blackboard functions. So we'll see a computer screen here, and I'll go through some of the methods for this specific class. OK, welcome back. Now you're seeing my computer monitor. I've got a headset on here so that my sound hopefully will come across very nicely. This is a Learn On Demand course. You can see a little bit about Learn On Demand courses here. If we go over to the left hand side, the first thing you're going to see is that you're in CIT 225 GIS Data Analysis. Next you're going to see Start Here and we're going to come back to Start Here in just a moment. Then you see three sections. The top section is basically course information, 
contacting me by email, some items like that. The middle section is the actual course material. And the bottom section is some support um, items that can be useful to you. We're not going to spend much time talking about the support items. You can read those on your own. But we're going to concern ourselves mainly with the syllabi and the course content. So I'm going to click on Start here. You can see my screen's changed and it's divided up into lots of different little parts. And so there's an initial welcome to the class. You have the overview and tour. As we've already stated, it's composed of three modules. Notice this first module, again, has two case studies. I keep emphasizing that. This is after you pre take the pretest in the module. The syllabus, and you must take the syllabus quiz, and we're going to look at that in just a moment. Because you're going to find some things are not available to you until after you take the syllabus quiz. The software, you need to have Office. You need to have GIMP. ArcGIS Desktop, which we'll provide to you. Notice it says version 10.3 or higher. This will not work on the Apple operating system, or you can be in Blackboard on the Apple operating system and also view all the information that I have written for you. You cannot do the actual mapping in the Apple operating system. There are no textbooks required for this course. Everything that you need has been written by myself, and here's the website to get to all the material not everything that's on this website will be used in the course, so there is some value-added information there. There's a little bit more information here about the Learn On Demand courses and how to contact me. So you can see some of the information. It tells you about plugins that you might need. There are changes sometimes made to the content management system, Blackboard, and then you'll have to make some changes to your local computer. How you're going to be graded. The first two case studies is worth a third of your grade. The second case study is worth a third of your grade. The third case study is worth a third of your grade. So therefore, the first two case studies each are worth 17% of your grade, are a total of 34, 33% for the second one, 33% for the third module case study. That's how the grade is going to be figured. We use a very straightforward 90, 80, 70, 60 grading scale, um, and we do give you a rubric for each item. So we're going to click here on Read the Syllabus and take the syllabus quiz. So you can see some basic information here, and then you can click the link above and get to the syllabus. And this is some of what we've already talked about. Each module is one-third of the total class different times when you start the class, but this is a Learn On Demand class, so you can start the class at different times during the semester. You can see some information about the course, what's going to be covered in each module. You can see some stuff about the general education. Notice at the bottom of the page, it says Next Page. If you look up here on the left, you'll see the syllabus is not just one or two pages long, but the syllabus is seven pages long. So we break down the percentages again for you, and you can go down to the next page. Again, you see our grading scale, and we can go to the next page. And we continue on through the syllabus with this, the different breakdowns, dropping the course, all the stuff you need to know. And we won't go over every page, but I'm going to go to the seventh page here. And you can see the disclaimer here in the bottom of the seventh page. All right. Let's see if we can go back. And you, by the way, you can print this information. So let's go back to page one. And now that we've gone through the syllabus, we are ready to take this syllabus quiz. So I'm going to go take the syllabus quiz and come back because not everything that you need to see is available to you until you take the syllabus quiz. Okay, I've taken the syllabus quiz. I scored 100% on the syllabus quiz. Now I'm ready to really get started in the class. So this middle box really is the information about the course. 
So if you see here, we got module one, module two, module three. We are assuming these modules build on each other. So you want to start with module one. In fact, you cannot get to module two. It's a reminder that about the syllabus quiz, I've already taken it. So I don't have to worry about that. I can now actually move right into the next step. And the next step is doing the pretest. You have to do the pretest. Even if you have no knowledge of what this course is about, you have to do the pretest. You can't get around not doing the pretest. So I'm just going to click there on it. It tells you some things about it. You must make sure that you submit it after you've finished it or it won't let you go any farther. And I'm going to click here on the pretest and take the pretest. Obviously, I'm going to do this in private so that I can um, not give you away the answers. I'm going to intentionally make sure that I do not get a 90% or higher on it. I'm going to score something lower than 90% so I can show you the pathway to the course material. So I will be back in just a moment. All right, I've taken the quiz. Did not score 90% or higher. Missed way more than two questions. So now I've got to go through the actual course. And if you notice here, a new area has shown that wasn't visible to us before. And this is because we took the pretest. We did not pass the pretest. And therefore, we're ready to start studying this content area. So I'm going to click here on the content area. It tells us case one is georeferencing and digitalization. Then the second area is introduction to remote sensing. So we're going to click on the first one. And it gives me a link to data on georeferencing and digitalization. So you can see here the information that we have. We have the two case studies up here at the top. And then we have reading material. We need to go to the reading material, but we can also look at what the case studies require. So you notice we have two sets of reading material here, georeferencing reading material and digitizing reading material. I'm going to click on the georeferencing. Notice there's a video here for me. There's a printer-friendly version of everything that's here. And there's lots of reading. So you read all the material that's given to you. Let's see here. Georeferencing just has this one page. We can then jump over to the digitizing page if we'd like. Again, there's another storyline, printer-friendly version, and the methodologies used for that part. Once we've completed all that, we can then go to the case study and attempt to do the case study. Once we complete the case study, we submit it. In this case, you go back and go to the other case study after you did the reading material on that case study. That one's a little different on remote sensing. Notice there's several pages here, more than what we saw in the previous example. And we would do that case study then at the end after we completed that. You do this type of a process throughout and what you'll end up having will be the completion of both case studies. At that point, you'll be able to move on to module two. You'll take a pretest and it'll go the same way as this one. Again, if you have any questions, always feel free to email me or contact me in any way that you can contact me, and I'll be more than willing to assist you. So that's how the course works.